Muhammad tortured a man for money. Muhammad tortured a man for money. This, 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 this is historical, right, Sam? We have a man um, named Kanena who knew where some money was hidden, and he refused to tell Muhammad after Muslims had won the battle against his town. Here's what happens. When Muhammad a asked him about the rest, he refused to produce it. So the man, so they knew this man knew where the money was hidden, and he wouldn't tell them where the rest of the money was hidden. When Muhammad ha asked him about the rest, he refused to produce it. So the apostle gave orders to Al-Zubair bin Al-Awam, torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. Then the apostle delivered him to Muhammad bin Maslama, and he struck off his head in revenge for his brother Mahmud, who had been killed uh, in the battle. So think about this. Muhammad wants to know where some money is hidden, and Muhammad doesn't have any international rules for correct conduct in, uh, in the aftermath of war. And so what does he have his followers do? Light a fire on this man's chest to burn him and torture him until he tells where the money is hidden. So according to Muhammad, in the example which, according to the Quran, is the ultimate moral example for Muslims to follow. That's Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran. Muhammad is the pattern of conduct that Muslims are supposed to follow. You can torture a man to extract information from him. You can torture him in the most brutal ways, and then when you've gotten what you want, you can chop off his head in revenge for other Muslims who've been killed at the hands of the unbeliever. So, that's number 10 for tonight. But, now, I wanted to add something because you mentioned Kanana. According to the Muslim sources, to add insult to injury, not only was he tortured and then killed, mm -hmm. he actually took his wife, Safiya. Now, remember, he's Jewish, and, and it's according to the Quran, Muslim men can marry women from the Jews and Christians, so that's not the violation. Mm -hmm. But what it is is that <clears throat> he took his wife, who was 17 years old at the time. Remember, Muhammad is in his 50s, mm -hmm. so he's marrying a 17-year-old. But the way, about, the way he goes about marrying her should trouble people because it not only shows that Muhammad had a person tortured and beheaded, but it also shows that Muhammad kept slaves and would actually <clears throat> would, would give a person slaves for other slaves. In, in order to get the point so I don't confuse the audience, let me just read the hadith. This comes from Sahil Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 8, Number 367. Sahil Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 8, Number 367, as the Lord Jesus anoints us to speak uh, truth accurately and represent what the Muslim sources accurately for his glory, honor, and praise. Now watch this. Narrated Abdul Aziz. <clears throat> Anas said, when Allah's apostle invited, invited Khaybar, we offered the Fajr prayer early in the morning when it was still dark. The Prophet rode and Abu Talha rode too and I was riding behind Abu Talha. Uh, the Prophet passed through the lane of Khaybar quickly and my knee was touching the thigh of the Prophet. He uncovered his thigh and I saw the whiteness of the thigh of the Prophet. When he entered the town, he said, Allahu Akbar! Khaybar is ruined. Whenever we approach near a hostile nation to fight, and by the way, the word hostile is in parentheses, then evil will be the mourning of those who have been warned. He repeated this thrice. Now watch this. The people came out for their jobs. Early in the morning, he catches these people unawares. They were not engaging in battle. They didn't have their war horses ready. They didn't have their soldiers ready to go and attack the Muslims. They were leaving their homes to go to work. The people came out for their jobs, and some of them said, Muhammad has come. Some of our companions added, with his army. We conquered Khaybar, took the people unawares, took the captives, and the booty was collected. Now watch, this is the relevant part. Dihya came and said, O oh Allah's a prophet, give me a slave girl from the prophets. A slave girl from the prophets. I'm sorry, prophets? I meant yeah, captives. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank I'm thinking so much about the prophet. Lord, protect me from error. Slave girl from the captives. In one sense, in sense she was a prophet, mm -hmm. meaning P-R-O-F-I-T, right? The prophet said, go and take any slave girl. Take who you want. He took Safiya bin Huye. This was Kinana's <clears throat> widow. A man came to the prophet and said, Allah's apostle, you gave Safiya bin Huye to Dihya. She is the chief mistress of the tribes of Koreza and Nadir, and she befits none but you. So the Prophet said, bring him along with her. So Dihya came with her, and when the Prophet saw her, he said to Dihya, 
take any slave girl other than her from the captives. Then the prophet manumitted her and married her. Now, according to Islamic law, you're supposed to give a dowry, right? Mm -hmm. When you're about to marry someone. So a person asked, Thabit asked Anas, Oh, Abu Hamza, what did the prophet pay her as her mahar, her dow dowry? He said, herself. By freeing her, that was her dowry. So he gave her the option, look, I'll set you free and I marry you, or you remain a slave. She goes, okay, set me free. So the dowry was setting her free. On top of that, another narration says that Muhammad gave Dihya seven slaves as an exchange for her. So you catch what's going on here. Not only do they take captive women, not only can they sleep with captive women, not only can they marry captive women, they also have slaves, and they can exchange slaves for other slaves. So much for the claim that Islam abolishes slavery. Seven slaves in exchange for her. So Muhammad tortures this woman's husband and then has him beheaded, then takes the man's wife, and the and Islam obviously is going to condemn him for this, right? No, it's all good. It's all good. And this is the man who has Allah's stamp of approval. If you want to imitate someone as a Muslim, you are supposed to imitate exactly. Muhammad.